All right, that last step that you can play with with your white borders is to turn on a stroke with your layer style. Now that stroke is going to put a, an outline on the inside, which is what I'm interested in, of your white borders, but it's also going to put it on the outside. So there's a step after you do this if you want this piping. But I, like, I love how clean this piping is. So once you pick the width and the color, you can kind of see how that's working on the inside, but I don't want it on the outside. So how do I do that? Well, in order to erase a layer style like a stroke from certain places, I need to merge all these together, all my white borders. So I'm going to go to select them all and then say layer merge layers or command E. It's working on it. There we go. They're all merged together. And by merging them together, it rasterized that layer style. I can also click, right click, and just like you can rasterize, you can also rasterize your layer style, which will turn that into pixels you can erase. And now I'm just going to do my final cropping, because it helps save memory. And I'm going to do it holding down Option. And maybe with a little extra space on the bottom. Just a little. And that black line should still be there. It is. Just on the inside. And now the outside is, is free and clear. So get off that cropping tool as soon as you can. But... Now I've got my, my project. Okay, so if you know you're not using certain backgrounds, delete them. And then you can merge all your backgrounds together if you want. Whoops. Deleted a little too much. Remember, we have a history. And I am pretty much matching my blocking sketch, if you guys can see that. but using all of those different layers of the background. It doesn't look like I have the inner piping on that side, but I do. It's just a glitch of zooming in and out. Now I have my background design. I'm going to put it all into one folder, just like I did for my type. And now I have my three elements, right? My background, I move the text blocking sketch down here. my type, and then my spot illustration. And then I have these white borders floating on top, framing it in. We talked about ways you could get more texture, but now, now I'm ready to choose my colors for my type. So I'm going to save my work. Make sure you know where it's saving. Mine's saving to right here. Should be. <laughs> hmm. Let me make sure of that. Save as PSD. Oh, it's saving to the desktop. Okay, so let me get it off the desktop. I don't see it on the desktop. So let me make sure of that. Remember, this is one way to help clear the memory of photo P as well. To save the file, to close photo P, to find the file, which is right there. Move it into your folder. And then open it in photo P. I don't need any of those tabs open anymore. Don't need anything else to be a vector because they're now vectors within my PSD file. Let that load. Okay, now, how do I choose colors for my type? Just like I did here, 
I like to use layer styles. Now, what if I wanted to color around the type? Well, then that's like uh, then that's like digital coloring. So, but first of all, let me take this black and let me fill this with something else. I'm going to double click to get my layer styles. This is from my black type on top of the pink. And I can choose a color. Let's say I can steal a color right from my image. Let's say this dark gray. I can push it a little bit. Maybe I want to warm that up. There we go. Then I say OK. So that's different than black, right? Then what if I want an offset, a line around it? I have a drop shadow on the one underneath it, but on this one I might do a stroke, which can be very helpful. And I'm going to make that stroke white because it shows up on a dark background. You're going to pick what you want for yours. You can pick any color you want. Right. But strokes and offsets are incredibly helpful. Make it a little bit bigger. You see how that helps readability as long as it's not too big. And you can get drunk with power on all the options you have. So in the morning class, I was basing it off of... That looks pretty good. Maybe a little smaller. Yeah. Let's do 19. Okay, then you have to say OK for each of these layer styles. And then they can always just be turned on and off. But I like the, the kind of brownish gray rather than the black. I like the white stroke and then the drop shadow behind it. But what if I want a gradation? You can also do that. So I can turn off my color overlay just for the moment. And I can fill it instead with a gradient overlay. And I can set that gradation to be anything I want just like with the background, right? So if I want it to be metallic, I can use their kind of metallic preset. And then I can change these colors with whatever I want as well. Just takes time, patience, experimentation. And just remember to hit OK when you're done. going to shift the color temperatures of these. This in the greens. Let's just show you how flexible it is. Let's do purples instead. Okay, good. I can even add more to the gradient. No, nope, that's not what I want. Oh, I have to say OK. I forgot to say OK. Right there. There we go. So you can change the colors on the gradient preset that you chose. You can also add colors to it. The way you add colors is you just click on the, uh, the gradient and then choose a color. And that works. Ah. But you said to hit OK at every step. And it can take PhotoP a while because this is lots of memory that it's using to modify something in real time.
because it's a rendering of the pixels in that layer. It's not actually a changing any of those pixels directly. It's an indirect adjustment with layer styles. You can see why it was important that I saved it before. Come on. Okay. 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 It will catch up. So in the morning class, I found inspiration from anime titles, right? And then used that to help pick what they look like with the the extra strokes, like the white to the black to the to the white to the black, that kind of thing. Also the gradient in it is just a pretty straightforward warm gradient, but I thought that was overpowering for this, so I inverted it. The gray texture is the blue. They have um, bevel and emboss turned on. It's like you can get, do a lot with type design. Enough already. Hmm. Might have overtaxed my program here. Trying to close. <laughs> so gradients, they can take a while. Yeah, I, I can for sure. And I had saved it right before this, but unfortunately it's not letting me out of the, out of these options. I can. I can I can lose that work. All right. So that is how we can use layer styles to color inside the black of the type. What if we want to color like inside the type? Maybe we had an open typeface, right? So I will show you. I'm going to put those strokes back on because I liked those. So again, it's by double clicking on your type layer, your vector, and then adding these layer styles where you think they're appropriate. I'm going to go right to a gradient this time after I do the stroke, because I know I want the stroke. And I want it on the outside, white, and I want it about 29 pixels, something like that. Take it down to 22. Yeah, I think that helps its readability. So now the color, that was the other thing I wanted to work with, right? So that's going to be color overlay, but I can do that in the gradient. So instead of having a, a gradient and a color, let's just go right to gradient overlay. I'm just going to do a simple one. And I'm going to change this color. to that dark gray. Come on. That's pretty warm. But we'll let me. 